Badminton is such a great sport with many heroes and players we can look up to. I have been lucky to have met Tony Gunawan early on as a player and have witnessed why he is so good in his craft. His mindset, his love, and his heart which he gave passionately for the sport is undeniably his formula to success. Hi, I'm Coach Kenny Asuncion and I've been a professional badminton coach for many years. This channel is all about helping you improve your badminton game. So if there's something specific you want to learn, please do write on the comments section below. Becoming a good player is learning how the best in the field did what they did and learn from them. Hi, Coach Tony. You've practically won every major title from the Olympics to the World Championships, Thomas Cup, Asian Games, and many more. First question, who among your family member plays badminton? Who influenced you to get into this sport? Well, uh, I'm born a uh, badminton family, so my parents put up playing and then my brother and I. My sister, unfortunately, not really uh, fit, you know, so easy get sick, so she's not playing, but my whole family is playing. Good to hear it's a very sporty family. Yeah. At what age did you know you wanted to be a great badminton player, making it to the Olympics and winning? When I joined national team, so when I was 18, joined national team, uh, that's the time that I realized, okay, this is probably my path. Uh, before that, actually, it's up and down. Almost uh, want to quit from badminton a couple of times. You know, teenager normally get like, getting lazy, a lot of distraction. So, yeah, when I joined national team, then then I a little bit more like serious about it. So yeah. What was the regular training schedule you had to go through in preparation for the Olympics? Uh, our training. Uh, normal schedule is 7.30 to 11 morning and then 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock afternoon. Uh, but before Olympic, actually, I, I do extra training. So I, around 5, 6 in the morning until then continue to uh, do the program. And then uh, we start at 3, then I come again as uh, extra training again at 2 with my head coach, Christian, uh, a lot of time. Then keep going. That's, I think, four months before Olympic. Would you share the sacrifices you had to make to become an Olympic gold medalist? I think the biggest sacrifice is like your focus, everything is, you know, you really bet on your life on, on badminton, right? So uh, different with other uh, kids when I grew up, they have a lot of um, activities other than school and you know, and even they play sport, but all my time uh, when I was growing up is going home from school is badminton, wake up badminton again. So every time it's just badminton. Even uh, join a team where we travel around around the world, uh, my focus is only for the tournament. So it's not really uh, going sightseeing. There's not that much chance to go. So when when me and Chandra at that time we lose, we practice also right away. So I think the sacrifice is just. Uh, uh, it's a focus to, you know, you go all in into, into uh, this sport. How did you deal with the pressure? Especially from semis to the finals, when you know you were so close to getting the goal? Uh, uh, I think you have to break it down, right? Like if you're thinking uh, about, just say, if, if I play right now with my age and doubles player play singles again, against uh, Kento Momota, there's no way I win, right? there's, there's no such thing. If I'm thinking 21 points, there's no way, right? But if one point, that's really possible, right? Uh, so every point, I need to treat it as this one point, I try to get it, this one point, I try to get it. So then, you know, if you're doing good every point, then, you know, you get 21 first, right? But if you're thinking about 21, uh, of course, I'm gonna give up to Komota again. Even though with that one point, the chances I have maybe only what 10 percent, 20 percent, right? But without going all out, then it's that that 10 or 20 percent, I'm not gonna get it. So basically, just break it down to even though semis or finals, uh, getting tired, like mentally also tired, you just break it down every point. How do I win this point? Instead of 
being passive, like, oh, I don't know my stuff. I don't want to make mistakes or, I, you know, uh, don't hit to me or, or oh, I'm so tired. No, just, just thinking about how do I get this point. After that, win or lose, the next uh, point is fresh start again. So how do we get uh, every point that, that you know, I can get, basically? What is the best thing badminton has taught you that has been applicable to real life? I think badminton teach me about real life. So I think badminton is a small part of life, right? You, and it's easy part of life, right? So you have your opponent, you have your teammate, you have your partner, the one that you know, your opponent in front of, you know, in opposite side of you, that right? you know, which is in real life, you don't know who they are. You don't know your friend. You, you don't really know like they, they really like you or helping you or not. You don't really know. So badminton is more part of life. It's easier than life. So uh, and badminton teaching you how to fight, to take care, and to you know grab what you need or what you want. Like as long as you really want it pretty bad. So that's uh, uh, I think badminton itself already teaching me uh, a lot itself. It is evident that you are a magnificent athlete winning two world championship goals with two different partners and for two different countries. How do you handle different partnerships? Because you clearly were so good at it. Um, it's not like how I handle. Actually, my, 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 all my partner is all like really strong players. Uh, it might be different personality, different uh, way of uh, uh, execute the shots right so for me I cannot be uh, what you call like like putting my ego hey, I'm, I'm better or not it's more of I'm adjusting what they're good at what they're not good at right so the same thing with you know with life with company with school right if you have a team project if your partner cannot do it you have to take over if you can do it right if not then both of you fail so so thinking that way, right? thinking that okay, it's not about your for mine, it's not about your mistake or my mistake, it's more of uh, how we adjust each other to uh, to get what we want. Because the goal is the same, to get the point, to win, is for both of us. That's it. So I think adjusting and communication is very important. What is your message to aspiring Olympic athletes? Uh, this you know this year last year and this year pandemic is really tough for all the athletes uh you know for their training their tournaments a lot of them is tournaments canceled training is also a lot of gym long you know closed uh so i just want uh, all the athletes playing olympic you know uh, wish you guys all the best and uh, enjoy the experience of olympic experience this is one of a uh, lifetime experience so really uh, take advantage and, and enjoy it. Fast questions. What is an ideal vacation for you? Beach or mountain lodges? Oh, uh, beach. Sweet or salty food? Sweet. Which partner would you pick? Arrogant but extremely skilled player or relatively good but extremely nice person? Nice. Black or white? White. What would you rather have with your meal? Appetizer or dessert? Uh, dessert. Iced coffee or boba milk tea? Boba, of course. Burger or beef rendang? Beef rendang. Cat or dog? Dog. Arm workouts or leg workouts? Used to be leg, but now maybe arm. Legs is tiring. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you consider a bigger win? Your Olympic gold or your world championship gold? Olympic. Thank you, Coach Tony. And before I ask for your parting words for badminton hopefuls, let us also take this opportunity to plug your YouTube channel called Badminton Overtime. And finally, your message for upcoming badminton players or aspiring badminton players? Uh, I think any anything that you want, like your dream, is not nothing is easy, right? So just always follow and believe in yourself. Follow your path, right? Believe in yourself that you know, and you not comparing with other people. So you, but you use other people as your measure, like measurement, right? How good they are is it, not you. So so how good you are is is from you. 
so instead of uh, looking comparing to other people you know so better you compare you to yourself like how good you want to be is have to be beating yourself from last week last year right then then you always keep improving okay so um, yeah just uh, keep working hard and and follow your dream uh, I'd say coach Tony is very nice and he's very humble uh, you wouldn't be able to tell that he's a world champion just by the way he um, treats everybody and so that rubs off on uh, us as his students and um, he's very dedicated so it also just teaches us to always work hard Coach Tony is a really supporting and nice coach. Um, he's always encouraging us to get better. So I think as a coach, like he's someone who instills confidence in you, like um, when there are things that you can't do well, or in tournaments when you um, are losing or making mistakes, he's someone who can bring that confidence back and can um, help you in whatever situation you're in. Um, I was just very dedicated and um, cares a lot about everyone that he teaches. Um, every small mistake or um, every issue, he doesn't let it pass, he corrects everything. So in that way, I think as a coach, he's someone who can not only help you improve skill-wise, but also as a person and mentally as well. Just as he is a world-class athlete, I feel like he is a world-class coach too. Um, he has great attention to detail and he just really cares a lot about the students and the athletes that he coaches here and I'm very honored to be training under him. You will also improve your game quickly if you learn more on double strategy. Click on the videos on your screen to learn more about what these are. Catch my next video so you can level up your game and become a smashing success.